specifically uh, target data security um, as an enabler. PSU play a very vital role in our daily lives, uh, means and nobody can uh, say, uh, deny over it that uh, there is no day in which uh, uh, we, do, we do not use any kind of services or products which is being, which is being uh, uh, developed or uh, provided by uh, public sector units. So, and similarly, IT also plays a very major role uh, in our daily lives. So, uh, so we need to understand that uh, we are uh, living in a modern era. Traditional days are gone. Uh, and we need to uh, we need to make sure or we need to make our mind that what pace we want to grow so if we want to grow faster and in a, in, a, in this modern era we need to have it in place we need to have uh, technologies which are available uh, we need to use those technology uh, for the growth we want to we want to achieve so it act as an enabler so uh, uh, so how many how many of you use mobile phones uh, uh, here how many of you have i think everybody don't need to ask how many of you use internet same answer correct how many of you uh, uh, book tickets online more means at least 80 90% so see how it is enabling us enabling us no no need to stand in a queue and uh, book your tickets now you just have to you have to click and provide your details and the uh, tickets are booked and sent to your mobiles now no need to have tickets from the counter itself you just have to show that the mobile and barcode and it is done so how fast uh, now services is being provided to the users and this is courtesy it and as far as the uh, organization is concerned if we, if we consider PSUs also. So these are the three factors which every organization want to have. Efficiency, transparency, and accountability. So, so uh, efficiency can be, can be uh, uh, can, you can have efficiency using the technology which are available. Means that you, you have uh, now laptops, computers, internet, mobile phones. Uh, uh, so there are different technologies which are available through which you can reduce the cost as well as faster way of uh, providing or, gen or uh, developing products, providing services. So this, this is how uh, uh, you can use uh, those technologies. And, and uh, with, the, with the help of IT itself, you can have transparency and accountability in, in the job done, which is which whatever job you are doing, whatever job is being given to anybody else, uh, then there should be a transparency, uh, transparency and accountability. And this can be achieved uh, using the technologies which are available. But having said that, IT is important and we can use it for various means. We can grow faster. But all these things depends on sharing. So you need to share data information. And sharing can be, it can be government to government, it can be government to business, it can be business to uh, government to cust uh, citizens, any, any kind of uh, sharing uh, uh, I'm talking about. So sharing is important until, unless we, uh, we share we cannot uh, to, uh, we cannot be on the growth path which we are uh, we like to achieve so living in a com confined uh, uh, area and uh, uh, want to grow faster this is not possible and we have seen this in the past but when we when we talk about sharing if we if we share something means if we uh, uh, provide uh, some information or some kind of stuff to anybody else so uh, we are losing control over it now which uh, increases the security scope you need which increasing the compliance factors requirement so that is why security and compliance are the, not the biggest admirer of sharing so when we talk about security what kind of security we are we are talking about so Data security is the data security is the most important thing, in, as far as information technology is concerned. Yes, physical security, everything is important. I can I am not saying that that is not important. But as we are living in a in a um, um, information technology world, data is the most important thing. Data is the one which any any malicious guy is looking for, uh, any hacker, any kind of um, uh, for any kind of malicious means. 
So when we talk about data security, these are the four things which come, in, come to in, in, in each and every mind. Uh, data confidentiality, data integrity, non-reputation, authenticity. So what data confidentiality is, if uh, so, uh, somebody shares data or uh, send data from uh, one place to another, if, uh, if some malicious, in, uh, malicious uh, person gets uh, into your network and tries to steal that data, he will be able to steal, but he will not be able to do anything with that data. He, he cannot see that data. So that is how that data confidentiality is maintained. Now, coming to the integrity part, uh, integrity means if I am sending some data to you, some information to you, you feel assured that there is nothing changed in between, not even a dot has been changed. Non-reputation, uh, if I am sending some data to you, so I am liable for it that I had sent that data, uh, data to you. I cannot deny in future that uh, uh, I haven't sent that data. Last but not the least, to control access to the data, uh, your resources or the data which is being sent is being sent by an authorized guy, an authentic guy. So these are the four pillars of data security, which is important in each and every uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, technology infrastructure, IT infrastructure has uh, these, uh, should have these components as far as data security is concerned. Now this was the security part. This was the security part. Now coming to the compliance part. There are many compliance, compliances which are available and this is the uh, first most which comes in each and every mind. That is the IT Act of India. So IT Act of, Act, IT Act of India clearly uh, mentions, mentions that if any organization is holding some sensitive data of any user or a, any organization, there should be reasonable security practices through which that data needs to be secured. And if that data is being compromised, then there are certain penalties for those debt organizations. Other than penalties, the, there is a loss of trust, there is a loss of re reputation, which is more important as far as an organization is concerned. And legal complication is the, is also the, can also be there. We, uh, in the past, people, people uh, when, when the IT Act of India was uh, uh, made, uh, there was no, uh, no mention of any kind of, what kind of data needs to be secured. So then it, is, it was amended and IT rules 2011, uh, 2011 uh, the IT rules came and they, they mentioned some of the data elements. Not all, these data elements differ from organization to organization. So, but if you see, uh, there are passwords, there are financial information, there are biometric information, and biometric information, no doubt, is part of, I think, most of the data, databases which are there in our country, courtesy Aadhaar. So, and you can see that they, uh, these elements have to be mandatorily protected. Reasonable pro uh, practices has to be involved as in IT Act of India, already mentioned in 43A. So when we talk about PSU, most of the PSUs has this e-procurement thing in place. E-procurement applications, e-tendering kind of scenario, most of the PSUs have. So STQC provide guidelines that if you are having e-procurement applications, these are the things which are required. So confidentiality, integrity is first, first thing, which is also there in IT Act of India. We need to follow IT Act of India when we are having some e-procurement or any kind of digital infrastructure in place. They ask for PKI infrastructure, means every uh, bid has to, if we say e-tendering or any kind of e-document, e-invoicing, then you need to sign that document and that uh, the PKI component has to be secured in a proper manner. Time stamping should be there. There should be, for confidentiality, there should be encryption in place. It can be uh, on a user, base, user uh, machines or it can be on a data center, uh, on, on your databases, on in your storage. The motive is that the confidentiality integ integrity has to be secured. And there are different uh, other guidelines also like uh, uh, controls, IS ISO 2700 on controls. This is there in each and every organization and each and every RFP will find I ISO 27001. And this also talks about integrity, confidentiality, and uh, authenticity. Then CCA guidelines, every, every organization use certificates at present, whether it is in e-procurement, whether it is any other applications. 
every organization use digital certificates. So how you secure those digital certificates? So CC has control of certifying authorities, which provides uh, licenses to the certifying authorities. So we have uh, around uh, six, seven certifying authorities, legal certifying authorities in India. So those certificates which is being provided has to be secured on on uh, on uh, hardware, cert, uh, crypto hardwares. So that that has been mentioned by CC. Now cloud is coming up. So Megraj is there, which uh, Megraj is there, which is for uh, uh, means uh, department can use uh, the cloud infrastructure and can place their uh, uh, their uh, applications uh, in that uh, cloud data center. So cloud security guidelines is on uh, is also there. Cyber security guidelines is also there. So there are different guidelines which are available. Other than these two things, security and uh, uh, compliances, there is another push which asks us to uh, be focused on more on our security infrastructure. And these are the facts. Data breaches, which is happening everywhere. You open a uh, newspaper, open magazine, open internet, you will find uh, uh, these things, these news, uh, news lines. So you can see in, uh, in single year, there were 90, 974 million records were stolen, data records were stolen. And it comes down to 31 records every second. So see how, uh, in what threat landscape we are living in. So these three things, security, compliances, and this kind of news, ask us to change our approach. So what can be an approach? So it, it is and any, any a CISO, CTO, or IT manager who's, who is taking care of those applications, who is taking care of data centers, that what needs to be done? What, uh, how, uh, now what should I do? The first thing is we need to have a different mindset. We need to be proactive. We need to think ahead of the um, hacker or a malicious guy. We need to think like a bad guy. So proactive approach is very important. So generally, we generally go with reactive approach that something happens and then we start amending those things. So we need to have security in place in such a manner that if something happens, first of all, no, nothing can happen. But if something happens, because there is no foolproof security, 100% security is not there. But sh security should be at the level that um, the effect of that breach should be low. Last but not, least, not the least, yes to data security. This is mo most important. We, we generally uh, don't say yes to security as far as our organization is concerned. But if, if that is the case of our home, we don't ask a police station to be opened when we are uh, building a home. We put our locks into it. And uh, other than the door lock, we have a safer uh, safe in our uh, uh, in some area of our house in which we, pro we keep our valuables. And after that too, we put our assets in banks. So bank is just a cloud. So you have trust on our bank, that is why you are providing your assets in lockers. So that is up to us, how we want to secure our uh, uh, architecture. And there's a solution. So there can be multiple solution to it, multiple uh, security, um, um, uh, you can say, um, uh, solutions which are available in the market, uh, which can be used on certain places, on different places, which can be used. So this, this is just a uh, snapshot of, a, you can see a data center. So these, this is the layers of data center. There is a physical security, you have guards, you have network infrastructure defense, that is parametric security. Then you have identity and access management, tokens to factor authentication, and, and then there is data. So if you, if you see in, in uh, past breaches which has happened, or you can say uh, in, uh, within one year, last year, most of the organizations had physical security, parametric security, and two factor authentication. But still, the data was compromised. So there should be something which needs to be done so that that uh, data is data should not be compromised. And the ultimate defense is encryption with secure key management. Now, anybody can encrypt. You can have free tools. You can, means any novice can encrypt. But 
proper in a proper encryption adequate encryption is required with proper and adequate key management if that is not there then um, you are okay with the same infrastructure only don't encrypt so we must protect what matters where it matters at the edge and at the core at the edge means at the user side as at the uh, data centric side so as a as a I means if you are an, uh, if you are running an organization or if you are running an um, means um, it infrastructure so you are the one which know where is where the, your data resides so it can be in database storage file servers there can be different places where data uh, where data is so wherever sensitive data is wherever you feel that it can be vulnerable you encrypt that data but after encryption where are the keys keys are most important but because keys are being used to encrypt that data so you need to store and manage keys in a proper manner and who is accessing your data who is authorized to access your data so you need to control access so if these three things has is there with the other security uh, security layers then there is an adequate security we can, we can say that we are at the level that if there is no, there will be no breach if breach happens then there should be uh, means uh, uh, the effect will be very very less so just to just to and uh, uh, and my presentation i have taken three use cases which can be uh, which you can relate uh, with your organization itself so e documents e procurement e invoicing anything so involves e documents so going from paper to digital security is required if you have e if you want to have a e invoicing in place e procurement in place how you will secure those invoices how will you, how will you secure the integrity and the non reputation part reputation part already and this comes with digital signing and encryption so those are encryption technologies so digital signing so in a digitized world you can you cannot sign with a pen a physical pen you need to have some uh, mechanism of signing uh, so that is called digital signing and for digital signing you require digital certificate so proper security has to be required so what uh, 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 what generally is required is compliance you need to comply to the guidelines which i mentioned usability and then the validation that the products which are the or the solution which you are using is has to be validated from the third party this is also a very uh, 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 you can say a wide uh, wide uh, accepted example that is badging cards but we generally we have multiple cards for example we have uh, a, a card for logic uh, physical access means you, if you want to get into the building get into the lab or anywhere else you need to provide that physical access card now when you are uh, when you are accessing your system you need to provide another card if you have another application you need to have another authentication factor or you will be using to uh, use an password which is vulnerable every time means if two guys are sitting side by side uh, anybody can steal your uh, username password so th that is not the best way of uh, authenticating in any application so this is how you you have a single card which can be used for logical physical access you can use it for uh, uh, means elect as an electronic purse so they, uh, uh, you can use it for uh, physical access to buildings and sites parking offices so these badge cards can be used for uh, uh, for any means uh, most of the use cases are covered lastly this is generally means uh, the pscs which are uh, taking the seismic images like right, can be iucl hpcl bpcl or uh, oil and gas ongc whichever organizations take seismic images then there are employee and customer records financial records then there are in the intellectual property like if uh, uh, you can say uh, i think bail uh, work on turbines so if the architecture of the turbine is being leaked to the competitor then all is gone and these information is being there in uh, databases storage etc so storage encryption and proper key management is the key in this so encryption encrypted data is somewhere else and, and encryption keys is somewhere else so you are, have isolated both the things and then you have a control access you have a, you but, uh, uh, you have two factor authentication in place so that only authorized person can access your application so what it provides is granular data controls limit administrator access to data this is very important there is no single point of failure now 
employee granular access, central key management and administrator, which is easy to use, you can say. So this was from my side around the data security part. And uh, if you have any query, just let me know, or I am available for the whole day here. So anytime you can, and uh, we can be happy, we will be happy to assist. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Aggie, for your views. And I would now like to invite Mr. Manoj Kumar, Chief Vigilance Officer, Coal India Limited, to join us on the dais, along with Mr. Arvind Prasad, Chief Vigilance Officer, Central Coal Field Limited. A big round of applause for the esteemed panel on stage. And to further discuss the, the topic on safeguarding PSU's importance of vigilance and security, may I now invite Mr. Manoj Kumar, Chief Vigilance Officer, Coal India Limited, to come and share his perspective with us, Mr. Manoj Kumar. Good afternoon to all of you. I will be talking about the subject of safeguarding PSUs. Now the subject has been boarded very appropriately because uh, we are trying to understand how vigilance and security safeguard the various interests of the companies. The most important interest that we are looking at is of course financial interest. The underlying is that there are leakages and there are pilferages which need to be controlled. And there the vigilance and the security play a very vital role. Now friends, generally when you talk about vigilance, generally the people have an idea that uh, it has some negative role to play. Either it impedes the decision making process in the company or it uh, creates an atmosphere of fear, so decision making becomes difficult. But I tell you, there is another flip side of the same issue. And uh, you know, most, one of the most important role that vigilance will play is uh, protecting the honest officers. Because we get a large number of frivolous complaints or motivated complaints from where they have to be protected. Unless we protect the right kind of people, the decision making process actually gets impeded. Now, as far as the safeguarding role is concerned, we will see that you know, vigilance plays a role which is much beyond even uh, the financial safeguarding in a moment time. The first thing that I would like to say is that basically we are looking at uh, stopping leakages of revenue. Revenue could be leaked while doing the procurements of various uh, goods or services. So there are times when we procure at the rates which are higher than the rate which, which is prevailing in the market. Or it can happen that there are better technologies available but we buy the inferior product. So basically what it means that the interest of the company is uh, not protected to the sense that we get something which either we don't require or if it is procured, then it is procured at, at a much higher price. Similarly, various kind of contracts. It could be in our company, for example, relating to transport contract, what is called MDO contracts, where the vendor is, uh, does the mining development an operation. Similarly, production con contracts where the entire production is outsourced. OBR contracts, in our, in our case it is overburden removal contracts. So basically in all these contracts, if we do not have right kind of contracting mechanism, then the interest of the company doesn't get protected. The terms and conditions can be loaded in favor of the vendor. Similarly, there could be ambiguities in the various terms and contracts. So they are later on misused uh, for, for making excessive payments. Similarly, while doing selling of goods, there could be leakages of revenue. 
for example, I can give higher quality of product and charge him less. Or it can also hap happen that we can give excessive quantity than what is uh, required to be given. So we'll see how things can be controlled. Similarly, pilferage of materials, the goods, for example, in our case, coal, can get pilfered right from the production centers. It can also get uh, pilfered while transporting it to various places, for example, railway sidings, and also while getting transported through the railway, uh, railway wagons. Similarly, we are looking at redundant purchases. Sometimes purchases are made which are not required, which are, which, which are done because of either improper control of inventories, etc., or it could be even motivated kind of purchases. Apart from that, the vigilance also plays an important role in terms of preventive vigilance, whereby we try to reduce the opportunity for corruption, we try to reduce the human interfaces so that the chances of corruption goes down. We also take various surveillance mechanisms and conduct inspections, etc., to ensure that the uh, mal practices, etc., goes down. As I said, the vigilance plays a role beyond merely safeguarding the financial interest. It can improve the decision-making mechanism in a company by reducing discretions, placing the right kind of systems in place, for example, manuals, various kind of guidelines, etc. Similarly, we can have system improvement uh, measures which can improve the system itself, which can lead to higher productivity or improved business processes. Then grievance reducial, it could be relating to vendors, customers, or even own employees. And then encouraging, encouraging the general culture of integrity and transparency. Now all this is much beyond merely looking at the revenue part of the company. Or generally we do what is called corruption risk analysis and we identify the areas which are more prone to corruption or malpractices. So in our company also we have to identify some of these areas. Then we look at each area very carefully and try to work out strategies whereby we can control leakages and uh, uh, pilferages. Now I just spend a time, a moment time in uh, security risks analysis. You know, when we look at the security aspect of the processes, operational uh, uh, areas, the first thing one has to do is to identify vulnerable points like we have done for the uh, vigilance risk analysis. Similarly, identify what are the entry exit points. For example, in our case, production centers have got various entry exit points. We try to keep them at the minimum. And whatever we have, we have to control them and control them eff effectively. Now, generally, in our case, the coal areas are very spread over large areas. So physical control is difficult. So what we do is what is called electronic surveillance. We'll see in a moment time how it can be done. As I said, one of the major concerns is pilferages of coal. Now, there are estimates which say it will be between 10 to 20 percent. If I take it at the higher uh, end, in terms of value, it becomes almost 20,000 crores in a year, or it is equivalent to about 60 percent of the import that the country is making. So that is the level of pilferage that we talk about. Now the the difficulty that we face is that even the smallest unit we take is a uh, minimum few uh, square kilometer. But generally, one area is hundreds of square, uh, square kilometers. There are large number of integrated points. There are no physical barriers. Similarly, there are large number of stakeholders, particularly outsourcing agencies, transporters, etc., etc. So we have to deal with them and ensure that all transactions we do with them uh, becomes much more secured. Now what uh, we are looking at is how we can stop leverages uh, during various uh, transactions. So one is the, when we, uh, from the production center, as we call it a phase where the coal is extracted from the mine, taking out and putting it to the surface, that is uh, stockyard. The existing mechanism is that 
the vehicles are counted physically, a record is kept, and then uh, multiplied with the average weight it carries. And that's how we work out how much quantity has been extracted. Now, in the changes that we have brought about, we have look, started looking at GPS counting, putting, putting the GPS system in, in each of the vehicles. Then, doing what is called uh, monthly tallying with the face measurement, face survey, whereby we calculate the actual volume of coal extracted from a mine. For that also, modern techniques have been used, for example, uh, laser scanner systems. Similarly, when the coal gets transported from stockyards to the sidings, again there are possible, because distance between a stockyard and a siding could be uh, sometimes very large, 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers. So during the transit period, there could be a possibility of uh, pilferages or misappropriation. So what we do is, we, I, as I said, we put the GPS, but more than that, we also have to track the weight because if any coal is taken out during the transit, we should be able to figure it out, at least identify the places and take remedial measures. Similarly, once the coal gets loaded onto the railway wagons, there is a possibility of uh, coal being preferred during the transit. So there, again, we have some device has been, mechanism has been devised to stop this kind of uh, system. So what we uh, are looking at is to compare data at various measurement points so that we are able to stop these uh, process, uh, practices. As I said, electronic surveillance is the only mechanism by which we can really do uh, checking because physical surveillance is difficult. So what we are looking at is the GPS-based vehicle tracking system. Another mechanism is uh, what is, we call it YTDS, which is Operator Independent Truck Dispatch System, whereby we, you know, from the control point, we, we are able to physically locate each and every vehicle, and we are able to find out whether the vehicle has deviated from the designated path or whether it has gone out of surveillance area. Similarly, CCTV have been installed at various points, which includes various integrated points, various bay bridges, various uh, uh, places where there is a possibility of pilferages. Similarly, RFID-based boom badges, so one is able to identify the vehicle, and only the identified vehicles are allowed to be crossed, so the barrier opens automatically, etc. The last point is the we weigh the various trucks at various points. So we need to capture the data in our system so that we are able to compare that whether the weights have changed during the course of movement of any vehicle. Now this is a general diagrammatic uh, uh, pattern of what we do for vehicle tracking, where you can see that uh, one gets in the central point, you can see that you know GPS system gets fitted into the vehicle, then data is collected through the uh, GPS system and thereby one takes it to the control room from where we can see even the historical data and also exception reports are generated thereby we are able to find out whether any uh, route deviation has taken place or various uh, time deviation taken place, speed deviation taken place and uh, thereby we are able to take action on exceptions which are generated from the system. Now this you can see one of the subsidy companies uh, who have implemented the GPS system whereby one is able to locate the various uh, uh, vehicles, their GPS coordinates, their location, etc. And if one uh, clicks on the individual point, one can see the historical data, one can see the exceptions if any. The similar thing you can also see in the uh, maps whereby one can see the various locations the vehicle has passed through and various points where the vehicle was located in different points of time. One can also do what is called geofencing whereby an entire area can be geofenced so that if the vehicle crosses that area we are able to get an alert. 
this is the YTD system that we have briefly mentioned to you, whereby we try to uh, check the location of uh, various uh, dumpers, etc., within the mining area and ensure that they do not go out of the uh, designated places. Now, this is the CCTV uh, footage of one of the places where uh, you can see in the railway siding how vehicles are coming and uh, the coal gets loaded onto the uh, railway wagons. Now, looking at the uh, entire process, one can figure out where the uh, trucks came loaded or empty or half loaded, whatever. Secondly, whether it is taking more time than required for loading onto the wagon, etc. So one can see right from the control room what is happening on the ground and take remedial measures if required. Now this is, uh, we are trying to indicate that, you know, when the way bridges, the vehicle comes, the way it is automatically taken and also CCTV image is taken, tagged down to that so that one is able to identify the vehicle along with the weight and gets transmit, the data gets transmitted to the central server where one can compare at various points. Now this is uh, one of the places where uh, there is a Innocent Bay Bridge where the vehicle is not required to stop while moving, it, the payment is taken and also data gets transferred to the server. This is the, how data gets recorded. In one of the subsidy companies, there is a how each area, each uh, uh, points gets connected and a wide area network is set up so that we are able to capture data at various points and compare. All this data gets fed into, we have got a central application called Coolnet, whereby we are able to take all the possible steps. This is all I wanted to uh, tell you. There is a small clip, if there is time, we can have a look at that, otherwise we can stop here. This uh, indicates how the weight gets tracked so that there is no filtrages in route. So RFID tag is put in the vehicle for identification purpose. Then the boom barrier identifies the vehicle and opens it. And the truck is allowed by opening the boom barrier. The empty track. Now it's going for the payment. Reaches the, the empty, empty track. platform. The sensors identify that the truck is properly placed. The tail weight being displayed in digitizer. The weight is recorded. RFID related computers. And then green light goes. The truck is coming out for taking load. Now the loaded truck is being placed on the platform. So two weights are to be taken, the one empty, one loaded. Weights. So that one gets to the coal stock. Shows that coal is loaded. Grass weight is taken. It is shown in the digitizer as well as in the computer. Time and event details is recorded in the computer. under CCTV monitoring and the truck goes for unloading its siding. It will use the mining area and go to the railway siding. So there is a distance between the two. As I said, it could be even 50, 60, 100 kilometers. And after reaching there, again, payment will be taken to find out whether there has been any loss of weight during the transit. Translated display. Okay. 
This is the coal being received at the boom barrier of the siding Visrampur. The RFA reader captures data from the RFA district and allows the truck in. For payment at destination beverage that is siding. So the entire data of their weight, everything is recorded. And the trucks goes for unloading. And now, in, uh, now we are using when load sales. And the thing is that it, for, for stable weight requires the weight has to be less. I mean, the speed has to be less. So one has to put it at the right place. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kumar, for a detailed insight into CIL. And now my request, Mr. Arvind Prasad, Chief Vigilance Officer, Central Coalfield Limited, to come and share his views and perspective with us. A round of applause, please. Very good afternoon to all of you. Our holding company, CVO, Sri Manoj Kumar sir, has given an insight what is being carried out in coal industry. CCL being the subsidiary of the Coal India Limited, we are using many technological intervention to strengthen the management in safeguarding the interest of the PSU. I will start with a quote from Freeman Dashan, which says, technology is a gift of God. After the gift of life, it is perhaps the greatest of God's gift. The another regarding use of technology to ensure transparency has been summed up by Isaac Asimov. Part of the inhumanity of the computer is that once it is completely programmed and working as smoothly, it is completely honest. Keeping this in mind, business department in CCL is working to enhance transparency, efficiency, and accountability by leveraging technology as per the mandate of the Central Business Commission, the Ministry of Coal, and the Coal India Limited. We are using many technical, technological intervention in day-to-day -day working, which I will be elaborating during the course of time in my presentation. This I am leaving because this is regarding the coal India, the, the CCL Central Coal Fields having operation of around 2,600 square kilometers, are spread over eight districts. All of them are natural affected, extremist affected districts. We are having 61 mines grounded in 12 areas, areas where the geographical location under which Many of the project offices are working, which may be open cast or urban land mines. There are seven vasaries, one central workshop, and five regional workshops where the repair of the HEMM equipments are being done. These are the 
coal fields area in our social command area, five coal field areas. This is the production of the last finance year. We, are, we have achieved a production of 55.7 million ton during the last financial year with a growth rate of, rate of around 12.3 percent. The dispatch is almost to the tune of 55.3 million ton, which is just below the target of 55.7 million. With respect to 55.7 million, dispatch of 55.3 million has been done by the Central Coal Fields Limited. The raw coal stock, which is a major concern earlier, has come down from 16.33 during April 2012 to 9.7 million ton on 1st April 2015. The gross sales figures, this is the profit before tax. This I am leaving. You may be heard of the regarding 1 billion production plan given by the, our coal minister, CCL will be contributing to one, 127 million with a growth rate of 17.94% by year 2019-20. This I am leaving. This is the Kaya Kalp model, which has been envisaged by our current CMD, Sri Gopal Singh, which refers to the transparency, ethics and philanthropy regarding safety and productivity, profit, people and planet with leading to the inclusive growth. One of the, now I'm coming to the actual IT initiative undertaken by the Central Coal Fields Limited. We have categorized here requirement and the action taken by the Central Coal Fields Limited as Sarvaj, Manoj Sir was telling regarding coal net, there was a requirement of unified solution to process all functionalities of CCL in order to streamline the working and reporting system. We have implemented ERP-like solution, which is called coal net in our Coal India Limited. We, are, we have also adapted to the coal net module. I will be discussing briefly among, about them. For providing transparency and accountability in carrying out the business facilities, we have implemented various IT initiatives like e-procurement, e-tendering with reverse auction, auto-refund of EMD. We have recently started with the help of National Informatics Center, who is the service provider for our e-tendering. Online billing and tra tracking system has also been implemented in our CCL. Online file movement system is already there e-filing of property return for all the executives and non-executives has been implemented since last two years. Our board of directors are also filing the e-returns. Online recruitment of non-executives is being done by the CCL. Uh, executive being the cutter, at the cutter of Coal India that is being done by our holding company, Coal India Limited. We have implemented Shamadhan sale also, which be, will be, I will be uh, briefly discussing in due course of time. As sir was telling regard to, pre to prevent proliferation and theft of coal from the transport trucks moving around within the command area of CCL, we have been using, we have been implementing GPRS, GPS-based vehicle traffic system along with the RFID-based women control system along with CCTV cameras across the command zone. We have, you know, to, to take care of all these things, we have established integrated database, dovetailing all other applications. We have started data center also in our CCL. I will be briefly taking about the initiative taken. Uh, first of all is e-tendering with reverse auction for which the CCL has been awarded in a previous session. We were the first subsidiary in Coal India to start this application. We are using the services of currently Metal Junction. Earlier, L1 was the vendor. Uh, uh, since last one, last one year, we have been migrated to Metal Junction. 
these are the four types of contract which we are finalizing through reverse auction process is the transportation and loading of coal sand and rejects wagon loading of coal hiring of HEMM for removal of overburden and extraction of coal extraction and transportation of coal by the deploying surface miners these if you put together in uh, quantum of uh, on, on volume of contracts this will lead to around 1500 to 2000 crores of contract every year if you'll see during the last three years we will be able to finalize the tender cumulative tender value over, over 7700 crores out of the the second one is the floated NIT is floated and fourth one is the reverse which we have finalized through that process is 276 plus 59 and if you see the savings in terms of the money is coming out to be around more than 1100 crores which and around uh, 33 of the cases we were able to arrive the price below much below than the estimated cost many of the benefits has been accrued through this process is increase of vendors earlier vendors were very less starting from 50 now there are 155 registered vendors who are participating through this process the second was the reduction in cycle time this is the major constant that uh, around 90 95 days are the average timeline in which the tenders are finalized that has come down by 30 days because we are still verifying the credentials of the uh, bidders after that we are going into the reverse auction process during technical evaluation we are still checking the documents through conventional process that is why the still time the average timeline is around 50 to 60 days as of now reduction in complaint confidentially maintained somebody uh, our fellow colleagues who is sitting here he was uh, briefing about the security aspect the vendor with the metal junction which through which we are taking the services they are stqc certified and following all the norms of the security of the stqc we are able since the tender uh, cycle time has gone down we are we are able to finalize the tender at a higher pace and the tender published has dub, doubled during last two to three years we are already using at the waste of the uh, ministry and the school india limited since 1st april 2015 all the tenders value 2 lakhs are done through e tendering by all the departments by all the uh, all sorts of tenders earlier many of the departments enm departments civil 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 living departments were not following it now the, that is being done and since 1st april we are using this over the period of time, uh, till July 2015, 949 cases of procurement access has been initiated through the tenders, valued 1322 crores, because majority of the tenders of high value contracts are done through reverse auction. Recently, auto refund of EMD, which I was telling, has been started in Central Coal Fields Limited, because earlier EMD refund was a uh, very, not a transparent manner people were writing to the business department for getting their EMD refund to, uh, with, the, with the help of NIC we, uh, we have started the auto refund of EMD in our company 100 percent repayment is done by the company the wide area network among the 12 operating areas have been implemented as of now since last two days back, out of the 12, nine area has been connected through the wide area network. All the stores, all the project offices, rail and roadway bridges has been connected and ready for ERP implementation. We are connecting as a tier one van, we are connecting all the headquarters and area offices, central units and regional stores through MPLS mode and tier 2 which is from the area to the different product project offices that is being done that has been done 
through microwave links. And this wide area network is the backbone of implementation of vehicle trunking system across the command area. By 31st of August this month, the remaining three area is likely to be completed. Our solution provider is on the job, and we are hopeful by 31st of this month, the remaining three areas will be also connected over the WAN. This is the schematic diagram. This is the tier two operating over micro links. All the physical works has been completed. The second part which our CV was telling regarding GPS, GPRS based vehicle tracking system, we have also implemented as of now in two areas. By 30th of September, as per target given by the Ministry of Coal, we will be likely to complete the remaining 10 areas also. The Orange, he, who is the solution provider of G, uh, vehicle tracking system, they are on the job. The control, um, the control room, is, room has been established at the headquarter level and at the uh, area level also. We are monitoring the movement of the loaded vehicles and attending to the violation alerts coming out of the vehicle control systems. I will be showing some of them. The CCTV has been put in place at the vulnerable points. Wave ridges, wave ridges integration with the coal net has also been done in two of the areas. This is the login for the, our vehicle tracking system. These are the sample alerts regarding route deviation. Designated route has been defined from the seam of the coal to the stock of the coal. If the vehicle is moving away from the designated route, alerts are coming. There is a speed alert also. If the vehicle is moving too fast, the alert is also coming. Route deviation alert and the geo fencing alert is also coming. If the, 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 the fencing of the quarry, if the vehicle is going beyond that point, the route deviation alert is coming not only at the controller station but also to the in charge of the project. These are snapshot of the dashboard. You can see there are 42 speed alerts, 213 stoppage alert. Stoppage means vehicle is the coal laden vehicle is stopped for more than a certain period of time. That period can be defined into the system. There are 3726 deviation alert. There are 251 geofence alert. Means the vehicle has crossed the boundary of the quarry. This is the, as on 21st against uh, around 161 vehicles we are having vehicle control systems. Out of them, 49 are active. 49 are active means the driver may not have started the vehicle because the power is being drawn once the ignition is on. Carrier is 161. 161 means the mobile SIM which has been loaded into the vehicle transit system is on, is working. The green portion which you are seeing, this is the, uh, the vehicle snapshot of the vehicle movement. The green one is the coal loaded trucks and the red one is the empty trucks. If you click the green one, you can have the details of the vehicle like carrier ID, vehicle registration, which area, moving at which speed, whether ignition is on or not, carrier status, the SIM is working or not, transportation, the vehicle belongs to the department or to the contractor, name, route, loaded status, these are the details which we can have after clicking the, carrier, uh, uh, clicking the green ones. I will show a small letter, I will show that. We are also using, you know, over the wide area network, we are using CoalNet application software, which is the, our ERP solution for the whole of the Coal India. There are many modules of the 
van which we are using in our Central Cold Fields Limited like payroll, finance information module, sale module, island material management module, personal information module and production information module. Let's see if you'll take the example of the payroll module, we are using different preparation of quarterly actual data MIS report of the employees, month-wise absentee report, income tax calculation and generation of form 16. This is being done through this module. This material man man management module, this has come a long way in improving our inventory management. We are able to identify the slow moving item, the slow moving item lying in the area that has been reduced over the period of time by using the online OMS module. We are able, able to, you know, before starting the procurement process, we can have a fair idea of the ability of the spare parts of the vehicle lying in the different project offices or to the different areas. This is, you know, stock analysis and generation of various types of laser and reports. We are able to do that. This, this is very useful in management of our materials, material management. We are using the sale module for the uh, category and customer wise allocation of coal for road sales. You may be knowing around 10% of the coal production is being sold through e-auction process. We are able to do that through the sale module. We are able to do faster billing and refund of the invest for customer satisfaction. Faster account closure and central policy implementation, providing breakup of total sales on a monthly basis to the field supply agreements, MOU and e-auction process. We are using many facility of the personal information system also using the uh, van financial investment system we are also using production production information model with this this model is likely to be implemented in our CCL. We are in the process of do, uh, starting this production module in our Colnet software. There are many other ID initiatives which we have undertaken in central call fields regarding uh, some of them are online bill tracking systems. See, for greater transparency of the stakeholder, this is required to be done and we have implemented this. Online complaint filing system. There are two sorts of uh, online complaint filing system in our central call fields. One is related with the general grievance nature, which is being dealt by our Shama Dansil and another is related with vigilance complaints. Corruption of any sort is being uh, uh, taken online complaints separately. After starting this Shama Dansil, the number of complaints has come down to around 700 to as of now last year around 400 com 411 complaints came to the business department. That has come down after uh, starting Shamadhan cell. Vigilance status of executive and executives that are done through IT intervention. Our CVO CIL, he has started recently vigilance clearance module, which is operationalized in all the subsidiary of the company. Prior to that also in CCL, we were having our own customized vigilance clearance module through which we were giving the vigilance, uh, vigilance clearance of executives as well as non-executives. We are using uh, online file movement system in the headquarters and after implementation of WAN, we will be able to extend this to all the areas. Uploading of many information related to bill payment, EMD status that are updated on the website for greater transparency. We are also uploading supply orders of headquarters as well as areas with unique material code on website. And recently, we have started a state of, a state of the art, will secure 24 by 7 by 365 days operational data centers, which is, data center is operational. 
I will show you one uh, small video of around one minute time. It's hardly a small one, which we have implemented at check post. This is automated check post. This is when it started. Earlier, the driver used to come down and go to the uh, you know this check post room for recording the details. Now all the details has is being recorded automatically. There is a RFID reader embedded on on the front glass. Thank you, ladies.